And our Contessa Brewer today, she's in San Juan with Lieutenant General Jeffrey Buchanan. He is the man appointed to lead all military hurricane efforts in Puerto Rico. Contessa? So, uh, General, they've introduced you now back in uh, CNBC headquarters. We spent a lot of time yesterday at the port looking at this bottleneck of supplies there. I know we've gotten some pushback from the officials here about the number of containers that are at the port. But what I heard on the ground yesterday is no one is better than the U.S. military than at logistics. So how do you break this bottleneck and get things moving in the supply chain? Well, first of all, we take the lead from FEMA, who's working directly in support of the governor. And they help us with priorities so that we can make sure that we're moving the right things in the right order to the right place. And we're moving things by both ground and air. Our real difficulty is, is on the interior of the island because right now we've got so many roads that are blocked that we're still having to move things by air. Uh, do you think that we've turned a corner now on logistics, that, th that this is the tip of the iceberg? Uh, I, I, I'd be hesitant to say that. I think we're getting more and more help in from the uh, federal government in particular. For example, right now we have 25 helicopters here. Within the next week we'll have 52. So it, our capacity is growing, but that doesn't mean that, that we're getting all the right help to the people who need it. The guys at the port said the number one obstacle is diesel because the truckers don't have the fuel to get from their homes to the trucks and then the trucks to the port to pick up the containers and then take them back. So how do you solve, I know 100 tankers of fuel are scheduled to come in on Monday. How do you solve that distribution part of fuel delivery? So again, we need to get it, we need to take it dominantly on the ground because you can't move a whole lot of fuel by air. We need to take it to the places of the greatest need. And we're, again, we're looking to FEMA to help direct us in that regard. They're Do working directly. Do you have enough directly. truckers? Uh, typically, they're not, they're not all military. Let me explain how this, uh, our, our best option are actually use local truckers that we pay using, using federal resources. But why? Because military truckers tend to be a little bit more expensive. What we'd like to do is pump that money back into the local economy so that people who need those jobs actually can come back to work. The other thing is, as long as the electrical grid is out, there will be an unquenchable thirst for diesel at this point. Are there any armies of utility workers, the way we said, you were in Irma, I was in Irma, 16,000 utility crews in Florida to get the power back up and running. What are we seeing in terms of the utility response? So FEMA has asked the Army Corps of Engineers to, to be responsible and take the lead for the long-term power grid rebuilding effort. Right now, as, as I understand it, we've got, we're, we're okay as far as power generation. The problem is really transmission lines. They're all down. Because, so it, this because is, it's old and the right. transmission lines, right, are a, a lot of them above ground, so there was a lot of damage. Right. So the Army Corps of Engineers, in fact, the uh, the commander of the Army Corps of Engineers, Lieutenant General Todd Semini, yeah. is on the island today working directly with FEMA. Uh, for a, This is going to be a very long project to rebuild all the transmission, but that's, that's the long-term prospect. In the meantime... We need to get fuel, as you know, to generators so that we can keep power up. Uh, General, I know that you've got to run here, but there was a lady here from Fajardo who's desperate for water. She says, we can't find it anywhere. And when you can find it, you don't have the cash to get it. The very basic supplies are missing. As soon as you get outside of these metropolitan areas, how do you now try to tackle the very most basic needs. So one of the things that we're doing and working directly with the Guard from Puerto Rico and from uh, from other states that have come from the United States, they've sent Guard forces here. We're establishing nodes throughout each of the 10 zones that the Puerto Rican Emergency Response Agency established ahead of time so that we can have people on the ground and everywhere throughout the island, again, away from the metropolitan areas, so we can actually help pull our forces into the right place with the right supplies. I was in the room this morning with the FEMA briefing here, and the um, reporters asked you, well, look, you sent thousands of troops into Haiti, you sent thousands of troops over to Japan, and, and the uh, regional FEMA administrator said, Look, you can't compare disaster zones, but you said there hasn't been enough troop response yet. Can you give me a sense of what we should expect now that there are more boots on the ground, so to speak? Right. So my priorities, again, working 
It really comes from the governor working with FEMA, and then we're here to support them. But my priorities as far as what help we're bringing in right now are medical capabilities. So we have Army, Navy, and Air Force hospitals coming in, uh, logistics support, uh, which is a capability to move and distribute supplies, trucks, and aircraft, rotary wing aviation, so uh, you, helicopters. I know that you've been responsible for logistics and coordination and response and other uh, hurricane recovery efforts. Can you give me a sense personally now what you're seeing in Puerto Rico and putting that in perspective so, with your broader experience? So for me, Harvey was monumental in Texas just because of the amount of flood damage. Right. But the impact here is completely different. It's like an atomic bomb went off with all all of the wind and the wind impact knocking down all trees, knocking down electrical lines, it's, it's just a very different disaster. The other thing is when you have people coming in and we, we've heard the plea for truck drivers, you know, and they're going to waive a lot of the restrictions to get people into commercial vehicles. When you have armies of emergency management people, I saw them from New York City and from cities around the nation, and they're all coming in, spaces, it also stresses the available resources now. Tell me how you provide for the influx of first responders now and people who are responsible for recovery. Yeah, well, we've got to, we've got to do it with some smarts because we don't want our first responders to become part of the problem and create an additional problem. So part of this is establishing what we call logistic support areas so that we can bring in supplies and, and support our workers, civilian or military, wherever they, uh, wherever they have to be. But we don't, want to, we don't want to create a bigger problem than already exists by, by moving a lot of first responders there, and we don't have an ability to sustain them with food, water, and medical treatment. So it, it's all part of a bigger plan. And again, we're working in support of FEMA on that plan. How much, but, I mean, people, now it's 10 days since the hurricane hit. People don't have a lot of patience left, along mm. with not a lot of water and not a lot of food. So when you're saying it's going to take time, how well, much time? Well, I, here's what I'll tell you. We're going to be here until until all the needs are met. And we're, we're going to be relentless in our pursuit of getting all these assets here to help the people. Uh, look, I, it's hard to imagine. For those, of, for those of the viewers that are back in the, you know, in the continental United States, it's just hard to imagine the amount of damage and suffering these people are going through. And they deserve help, and we're going to give it to them. Uh, I, I, I don't know how much you've been briefed yet, but Vieques... Um, apparently ha has not seen a lot of assistance or aid or first responders in the 10 days since the storm hit. Do you have any information about the I, island of Vieques right, right off the coast yeah, of Puerto Rico? The, what I do know is that our, our uh, expeditionary support group, the, uh, the Navy ships that are off the coast, they have been dealing with Vieques, but, but again, they, they have some capability, but, uh, but we need more. And then you're looking at half the island that does not have running water. I know that getting generators to these water issues are, it's a priority to, to pump the water. What about fuel to those generators? Is there access so, now to get fuel to all these places? Well, it's the same, it's the same problem. So around the, the ring route on yeah. the outside of the island, we're doing fairly well with getting fuel and now roads are open so we can move fuel by trucks yep. inside right now we're still limited by air and so it just limits how much I, we can take. i appreciate so much the time you've given us i, I know that you're um off to actually do your official duties so many people wanting answers thank you so much for giving us yeah, some of thanks them. thanks appreciate, Contessa. That. appreciate it so as you can tell go ahead General. as you can tell here uh, coordinated effort. It involves the Department of Defense. It involves FEMA. It involves a lot of local agencies uh, here in Puerto Rico. We heard from the governor this morning saying that the ports are the absolute priority, that they plan to go in and move those containers. And they said that if the private companies can't go in and get containers full of essential supplies, they will be required to sell them to the government so that the government can move them out, that they're moving those generators to water pumps, that they're working on the uh, electrical grid and have now powered, they've got the airport up and running, connected to the grid. Uh, one of the major hospitals here in Children's Hospital, uh, uh, connected to the grid. So there is movement and there is a sense now that with some attention from Washington, D.C. and the federal response that people of Puerto Rico will start to see things improving.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.